Hi, I'm Lindsay. Hi, I'm Rico. And this is The Game Plan. Today we're doing our favorite game mechanisms and the games that we feel best show, support, reveal, embrace, embrace that mechanism. Yeah, top five mechanisms and then for each mechanism, the game that we feel implements that mechanism mm -hmm. the best or the most unique or we had the best. That was our favorite part of this particular game. Maybe. Yeah, or eh, it's, it's subjective. Just, that's your favorite game with this mechanism is more how I interpreted it. So. And then we have to guess each other's. Yeah, this is going to not be good. And, um, and the, position, the correct positioning. Yeah. So right now you're winning one to zero and we t well and then one zero one because we've tied once yeah okay so i'm halfway there <laughs> okay so okay there yeah i gotta make it so that you don't see it yeah Is that good okay, okay. You, can you see it i can't see yours okay good because yeah. if you could we're, we're calling some, yeah. somebody to make some money <laughs> about that okay so your number five. Uh, my number five is a modular board. Mm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that. I all. didn't think she'd get that. No, and I, I didn't even know you liked those really. I didn't either. Okay, maybe I should explain a little bit how I did this. So I, what I did was I went to BGG. I selected just the advanced search and selected a game mechanism, and then I looked at the games that I have rated it, that have that mechanism in them and see generally how much do I enjoy these games and then think about how that mechanism plays in that game or affects it. And what I found out was that, yeah, it turns out there's some game mechanisms that I'd never really thought about that really influenced how much I enjoy these particular games. So I was like, well, module turns out that if there's a modular board, there's a better chance I'll like it, I guess. It, it seems that way, All obviously. Right. I mean, I, I saw it and I thought about it, but I don't think I even wrote it down as an option. I'll have to check later. Yeah, I, it, <coughs> excuse me, it surprised me. Yeah. I, uh, I, in fact, I don't expect that you'll get really I'm, I any don't of these. expect to get any of yours. Yeah. And I don't expect to get any of yours. I yours. think you might get a couple of mine. Maybe. I'm more of an open book. So my, my favorite game that has a modular board is Istanbul. Or at least I feel it. Yeah. It, it uses that particular mechanism to influence how the game plays that's the a, best. That's a good game with a modular board. Yeah, it's a mo and because of the way the modular board works, every game gonna is going to be different. Be different. Yeah. It's just so variable in that sense. Um, there's some other games that I've played that I enjoyed with modular boards, but I felt that the the modular board setups for those, like say, Clans of Caledonia. Um, Gaia project even they're just not quite as variable and they yeah. the map themselves don't influence as much of the game as right because they're big pieces that you're just putting this chunk over here but with Istanbul it's every little yeah every piece is and be every in a piece area. is a new area for your guy so like in say Gaia project is an example it's a it's space with planets but every space has planets so there's really nothing unique about one particular over the other whereas Istanbul everyone's different mm -hmm. so yeah that was my reason that's good Okay, you ready for my number five? Yeah, your number five. Hand management. Okay, I, I, okay. So I, I did choose hands management, but not, not for your number five. five. So I, I did get that one wrong. But I bet. So how are we gonna do? I bet you I have the right game though. Do you think? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Is but it? What do you guys think? If I get the right game? No, no, it no, no, no. That's cheating. Okay. Just well. because the audience wants you to cheat doesn't mean it make it right. Okay. Okay, bonanza. Oh, well, okay. No, maybe <laughs> I didn't pick that correctly then. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. So I really like Bonanza, and I feel like you have to really work at how you're playing your hand. That's but true. the first two are played for you. Like you have to play the first two in order. Well, you have to play the first one, and then you optionally can right. play the second. But yeah. you, and you can't move anything around. Yeah. So you have to really work at like trading stuff out and everything. So that's why I thought that was a really good hand management game. Touche. And God, I love Bonanza. Yeah, I do. You, do. Yeah. you really do. And I enjoy it too. Yeah. But not, not as much as she does. So I just, I thought that was a really good yeah. choice for hand management. Yeah, I, I like it. Okay. Good job. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we're going on to my number four? Yes. Okay, my number four 
is drafting. Your number four is draft courses. I don't have that at all. Okay, and then um, my drafting was Sagrada. I like the way okay. the drafting works in Sagrada, where it's snakes, so you get, you know, one, everybody drafts, and then on the way back to, you know, this guy back, back to back, and then that person won, and so mm -hmm. it comes back that way. Um, I, I really like Sagrada, and I think that the drafting of Sagrada is what makes that puzzle for me so interesting. Like, I, I, st I like the idea of putting, like, you know, the dice with the either color or number based off of the pattern in front of you. That's fun, but there's other games that do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think for that part, role player for me is, is more interesting. I enjoy that particular placing of the die and trying to figure out the puzzle of which die and color go the best. Um, so Sagrada to me is second to role player, but the drafting part of Sagrada okay. really makes Sagrada fun for me. Okay. So that's why I chose that one. I don't have drafting on yours. Okay. <laughs> At all. I feel okay. like I might do better in this one. Than, I, maybe, than yeah. Than this okay. might be Rico's so, forte or more than mine. So number four for you. I've already guessed hand management, so I was already wrong. Okay, number four for me is tile placement. Tile placement. That's interesting because yeah. I chose that as number three for you. So we're just... And, I, and I'm pretty sure I got this game. Barren part? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh! But I, you have to get the placement. I know. But, but records will show, history will show <laughs> how close I was. And when it, if it comes down to a tie, they will give me the tie. Yeah, this maybe. This one. Maybe. Okay. So Barren Park, if you've never played it, it's adorable. But it's also really fun. Um... You're playing out your bear park. It's just a bear park, right? Yeah. Is it German? It's German. German for bear park. You have koala bears and um, polar bears and elk, um, panda bears. There's a, an expansion coming out for grizzly bears. And you've got just really strangely um, shaped tiles that you're placing down. And depending on where you place them, you can get another tile of a different color. And you're, just, you're trying to cover your whole park, like Tetris style kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very fun, thinky, yeah. puzzly, spatial puzzle. Yeah, it's a spatial stuff. puzzle, and I'm not usually really good at that, but I like this version. Yeah. And as you cover things on your board, that dictates what you're able to have available to you for your following yeah. turns, so it's, and, it's kind of a think ahead. Yeah, and if you run out of, say, the little squares that are just one, you're out. They're out of them, and yeah. so somebody can take all the, they're the bathrooms, so somebody can take all the bathrooms, and then you have this one square that you've got to cover, and it's it's and really someone good. has to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and the little, the little people, like, on the river, like, it, they have unique little paintings. So yeah. some of your tiles may have little fun hidden gems yeah, in there. Yeah, you got to look at them all. They're fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're on to number, number three. three. Okay. So what's your number three? So my number three is hand management. Oh, yay. Oh, no. I got that. Did you really? But I have to get the game. <sighs> But you're going to probably get the game. Well, tell me what the game is. Great Western Trail. I got one. Yay. Dang it. I did. I got it. And I thought you'd choose Great Western Trail as your hand. So I picked hand management for you right. as number four, and I thought you'd choose Great Western Trail. Yeah. So the reason I, I like Great Western, and she knows. <laughs> the, what I love about it, uh, I always tell people Great Western Trail to me is a very thematic game. And I, I've, I'm sure some people are going to disagree with that. But for me, I'm holding these, these cows in my hand. And I need to figure out the best spots to place, you know, to, to stop on so that I can discard and draw up and do all my, you know, little actions that allow me to manipulate the hand that I have. So that by the time that I've circled around to Kansas City, I can actually ship off a very good hand. And so the entire purpose of the game is hand management and all the other stuff is just supporting that. Um, Regardless of that, it's my favorite hand management game just because it's a great game. It is a great game. Uh, but that, to me, I'm like, I'm like, I'm wrestling, I'm, I'm wrangling all these cattle. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping off and making sure that everything is as good as it can go all the way through. I, fantastic yeah, game. It is, and yeah, it's, it's a great game. I get excited <sighs> just thinking about it. I'm so upset that you got I'm that because I, but I'm, I did, I totally did. Okay, so what is your number three? My number three is deck pool building. I chose your number two as pool building. I'm sure you'll get the game. Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. Orleans is a bag building game. Is that the technical yes. term for it? Yes, bag built, yeah. So you figure you have to put all these guys out to get new guys to put in your bag, but then 
at the end of the round, everybody goes back in your bag. And so you could be pulling out the same three every time. And it can be frustrating, but it can also be really amazing when you get that perfect pull and you've got all these guys that you can use in all these different ways and everybody else is done with their turns, but you're still getting stuff and that, that's way fun. Yeah, it's simultaneous play yeah. on, that port, on that particular portion. So if you've either gotten very lucky and I don't really, I do think that luck is mitigated a lot in this game. Like I am not a fan of luck games. I very much like this one. Uh, when you draw either very luckily or you've, You've put together a distribution of tiles that you think, no matter what you pull, you can use correctly. Kind of like, like a dream team. Yeah, like that's that's really where the strategy of this game comes in is understanding what pool of pieces complement each other just right, and then you know filling your bag and, and seeding it with that. But when you fill when you pull those out and you're able to just combo and make things happen, and this thing pulls back to allow you to do a second one there, and yeah, it gets so satisfying. Very fun yes. when ever, all the other players are just watching you do yeah. that. Yeah, wow. and you're like, oh no, I still have some guys to use. Oh, this one here. Oh, I'll yeah. get some cheese. <laughs> yeah, love it. Okay. All right. So number two. Number two. My number two is simultaneous action selection. Okay, no, I okay. I didn't think you'd get this one. And uh, my, my favorite game with simultaneous action selection is Roll for the Galaxy. Oh, okay. And I, I can and, see that. And I think that's, th this one jumped out from, uh, um, uh, for me on this. For that mechanism. For this mechanism mm -hmm. because it's such the backbone of how it plays, right? So the idea with Roll for the Galaxy is everybody has a shield, you roll some die. Depending on the symbols that have shown up on the die, you have a little chart thing that you can start lining these die up to use as those particular actions and you activate one you must activate one but then you can optionally assign die to other actions but those die are can only be used if, if somebody else activates if the action has been activated and since you can only activate one you, you just have to hope you you sometimes are yeah relying mm -hmm. on other people and so you're kind of anticipating based off of what they've built I think this is about this time for this person to do some shipping. I think maybe they're going to do shipping, so I'll hope they can do that. Or do I not trust that and I really need shipping, so I'll go ahead and activate it on the risk that we both activate it. That, that simultaneous selection, and then when everyone reveals and we look and we activate which particular phases we're going to be doing this round, that to me is the, just the, the gold of this game. I have a hard time with that game because I can't rely on anybody else to do what I need them to do. So Just it's... like in real life. <laughs> It often comes up that I've activated something that somebody else hasn't, so then everything else that I've chosen is just useless. She's not the best at reading other players. No, I'm not a good poker player. Not a, not a good poker player, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Also, I, I get bogged down with what I'm doing, so I can't pay attention to what other people are doing, so I have a hard time. That just sounds selfish to But me. anyway. <laughs> so you're number two. My number two. Rondell. Okay. Nope, I didn't get... Turns out I get real excited when a game has a rondelle. Yeah, is that right? Let's yeah. see, I'm trying to... I, I, I didn't see that coming, so now I'm putting together... So when, really? we're, when we're talking about games and, oh, let's play this game, it has these mechanisms, I get really excited when it's a rondelle. Really? Yeah. So you, so, so, so you actually are, are actively excited. It's I, not yeah. something that you looked and you realized later, like, wow, it mm -mm. turns out I like Rondell. When I think about Rondell, Rondell I get excited. Okay. And I picked Great Western Trail. And so that, therefore I couldn't have it for hand management. I, I suppose. <laughs> okay. So Great Western Trail, you're doing hand management, but the way to buy cows and get to Kansas City on that stuff is going through a Rondell and it can change depending on your, your game because the building's are in different orders and then people put out buildings in different orders. So it's a rondelle, you're going the same way, but it's changing every round. And it's it's kind of interesting too because you have different paths through the rondelle. I mean, yeah, ultimately you, you have to things. end up here and then you start over here. So it's essentially going in a big circle, but you can go forward and then sweep down to this branch or, or go through this branch. Depending so, on mm -hmm. who you want to give money to basically, if you want yeah. to pay the bank or if you want to pay other players. Or get or which one's actions. cheaper, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So I really like a rondelle. Mm. And I haven't played that many games with rondelles, mm. but I really like it. And I think she put this one on here just so that I wouldn't get <laughs> the order correct. Because I've gotten right, yeah. everyone until this one, but just in the wrong order. Right. Just to throw them off. Yeah. Okay, fine. I think we established that I don't do those things. <laughs> okay. Rondelle. Okay. Yep. 
Great Western Trail. Mm -hmm. Still a good game. Yep. All right, so my number one. We, did, we didn't do your number. Did we do your number? Yes, we did your number two, but I didn't get it. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So my number one is variable phase order, and I didn't know that. <sighs> I was very surprised. Phase order. Yeah. Okay. And when I saw what, yeah, when, it, when I put it together as to like, oh, I, I liked variable phase order, and probably like you're like, what exactly is variable phase order? Okay. I started kind of looking into it and realizing what games do it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is my favorite. So, Puerto Rico is my favorite game with variable phase order. Oh, because every round is... Because every, the, the, the way order. that the game plays out each round is, de it changes depending on the player or based mm -hmm. off of certain things that have happened in the game. And so it's not just always phase one and then phase yeah. two and then clean up and then phase one and then phase... So it changes every single time. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Every game that I've played that's that has good. that, love it. Good. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and you didn't get it? No, oh. not at all. Okay. Okay, my favorite is worker, worker placement. placement. And my favorite worker placement is Energy, Energy Empire. Empire. Okay, so we're, so we're one to tied one. again. Now we're tied. Um, I just, I'm a sucker for a worker placement game. There's only one worker placement game that I've ever played that I wouldn't play again. Well, that I didn't really get enough to want to play again. Um, that was Madeira. Oh, okay. I didn't like Madeira the first time we played it, but our game group has convinced me to try it one more time because now I'm more of a gamer. Yeah, it's... So we'll see, but Energy Empire is... I, but I thought you didn't like Mitiera. Um, I mean, that was just a broken game. Oh, okay. So, so that doesn't count. No, that doesn't count. If it's, if it's not... It's just broken. Okay, so it doesn't count as a game then, maybe? I guess it just doesn't... <laughs> registered to me okay. <laughs> anymore. Okay. So there's only one that I don't like, <clears throat> except for all the ones that I consider broken and, and not in this category. Okay, so... I'm Lindsay. Maybe you got me there. <laughs> um, so Energy Empire is my favorite game of all time. It's my favorite um, worker, placement. worker placement of all time. It's my... and worker placement is my favorite mechanism, so it just kind of all came together. And I, he saw it coming a mile away. I did. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's go over what we thought for each other. Um, so for your number five, I thought you were going to go drafting and Seven Wonders. I almost went drafting, but I was going to go um, between two cities. Okay. So. Very similar yeah. type of drafting. Okay. What do you think for my number five? Number five, I thought it was going to be deck pool building for Dominion. Oh, okay. All right, for your number four, you know that I chose hand management with Great Western Trail. Um, for your number four, I picked variable player power for Scythe. Okay, and I'd considered variable player power, and this was one that kind of surprised me because I, I was, I thought for sure Scythe was going to be yeah, in here. Yeah, me too. it's my favorite game. Clearly. And when I looked at the mechanisms that are involved in Scythe, no one of them stood really out to stood me. Out. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I don't really... I didn't feel like it was a good candidate for any one of the, these on this list. Okay. And that particular mechanism, I guess I just don't have, haven't played enough games or they don't stand out to me as being remarkable in that, in, you know, in the variable power. That's that good. Okay. Didn't get it. All right. So what'd you pick for me for number three? Number three is tile placement in Barron Park. Okay. So for you, number three, I picked hand management for Great Western That's, Trail. You got that right. Okay. Yeah, so Oh yeah. That was actually the one. Huh? The one you got. Okay. Yeah. Rub cool. it in. And then number two, I chose your pool building or Leon's. Okay. For, and that was one off again. For, I'm really surprised this one it wasn't on your list. Okay, what's that? Action movement programming. Because you're so good at it. I, but I don't, it's, I mean, it's not, and I then don't. Mechs look, versus Minions was the game that Yeah, I and that would have, if, if it was action programming, it would be Mechs versus Minions. Um, yeah, I guess maybe I just don't play them enough. Like, I guess, oh so, yeah. You, she, okay, she, she's not as big of a fan. She's not a fan. She probably wouldn't play them if I didn't ask her to. Um, and so, I just don't play them a lot, right? And, but I saw that and I was like, oh, he's so good at this. It, it just hits the right points of your brain that I just thought you would pick. I thought you really liked it. I, and it's, it's, it is fun. It's, it's more that it's natural so with my job and what i do it's just the same I, it's the same type of thought process so mm. it's very natural for me so i'm good at it because i practice it all the time but maybe i'm just jealous, jealous? <laughs> i don't know <laughs> 
And then I got your number one as worker placement. Okay, so for yours, I thought it was going to be worker placement, but I thought it was going to be viticulture. And I, I am surprised worker placement didn't show up on my list. It definitely had the largest collection of games that I have rated high. Yeah, maybe but, that's why I thought. But I, st I noticed it's because everything has worker. Like, a lot of games leverage the concept of worker placement for how you select your actions. That's just in some way, shape, or form. It's just very, very popular for good reason. It's a fantastic mechanism, and I do enjoy it. But I looking at all those games, I'm like, no one of these stands out to me as like the worker placement game above all others other than Energy Empire. And it just didn't stand out enough for me. And I thought that you would pick Viticulture because it's a little more worker placement-y. It is. Than Energy Empire because when you go somewhere, nobody else can go there unless they have their big guy. And in Energy Empire, you can go there. You just have to make your stack a little bit, just one higher. So it kind of embodies worker placement a little more than Energy Empire, I guess. Yeah, I could see that. And that's why I thought you were going to say that. I could see that, and and I think you're you're you probably called that correctly. If I would have thought it through, I may have landed on for those reasons because I'm thinking now Energy Empire. A lot of it is with your Tableau management. Um, I think that's probably the most uh, standout part of the game for me is how you play to the board with your worker, and then you you play workers, but you're you're managing a Tableau, and that's really what the crux of the game is around. So you're probably right. I think Viticulture is the most worker placementy game that I like, and I like it very much. Yeah. So I'll take a star for that. Least. Not a point, a star. Then I get three stars for being one off on... Yeah, you can have it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that was our top five mechanisms and the games that we like with it in them, or that it uses the most. Yes. And I think we just thought about The brevity of that title was staggering. Wasn't it? I love you. <laughs> yeah, you do. All right, so this has been The Game Plan. I'm Lindsay. Rico. Thanks for watching, guys.